again. If you look at debate in America today, uh, frankly, I think it's quite depressing. If you pick any of the hot button issues, whether it's uh, affirmative action or, or taxes, uh, you'll see a debate about the issues, about the efficacy of, of whether a certain policy prescription makes sense. But oftentimes, the debate will descend into name calling. Uh, and I would argue that largely today that name calling comes uh, from the political left. For example, the issue of affirmative action. If you discuss affirmative action as a policy, the merits of whether it makes sense, pretty quickly, oftentimes in the dialogue, you will be accused of racism or bigotry because you fail to embrace that policy. Or take a look at the issue of tax policy. Uh, oftentimes, the liberal left will not simply debate whether raising taxes makes economic sense, but they'll make a value judgment or make the claim that those opposed to raising taxes are greedy. Or take the issue of the environment. Uh, it's not enough to debate whether a certain environmental policy makes sense. The environmental movement oftentimes now uses words like, you know, polluter or somebody who doesn't care about the environment to make their point and address it. Now, there's no question that in, in debate, this happens on both sides. And there's no question that hypocrisy is a condition that we all struggle with. Uh, the simple fact is if, if you set standards or believe in standards, you're invariably going to fall short. So therefore, I think we, we all would agree, to a certain extent, we struggle with hypocrisy. But I would argue that liberal hypocrisy is, is perhaps the most dangerous and, and pernicious of the two. And here's why. First of all, if you look at any discussion of hypocrisy in America today, it has been by and large focused on hypocrisy by conservatives. If you have a, a, a pro-family uh, minister or a pro-family uh, you know, business leader who uh, ends up uh, you know, having an affair or cheating on his wife, that gets dramatic attention. Uh, the, uh, I think, frankly, false charges of hypocrisy leveled against Bill Bennett, um, who wrote the Book of Virtues and uh, then uh, ha uh, gambled quite a bit, was accused of hypocrisy, is another example where this is often a tool or weapon that's used against conservatives. Uh, but the simple fact is that hypocrisy on the left has never been explored. It's never really been systematically analyzed, and that's what I try to do in this book. The second thing, though, that I think is so important in looking at hypocrisy and its prevalence in America today is that there is, in my mind, a distinct difference between conservative hypocrisy on the one hand and that exercised by liberals on the other. Think about it for a second, those instances of, of conservative hypocrisy that you can think about. When conservatives abandon their principles and become hypocrites, what ends up happening? They end up hurting their families. They end up hurting themselves. It ends up being a loss-loss situation. It's very hard to find a conservative who abandoned their conservative principles to perhaps embrace liberal or other principles and ended up being better because of it. Uh, I would argue that that's because conservative principles, when it comes to issues like personal morality, for example, they're like guardrails on a winding road. You can certainly bust through them, but to do so, you do so at your own peril. What's interesting about liberal hypocrisy, is, as I'll be discussing here in a moment, is that it's the opposite. Think about it for a moment as, as I discuss these cases. What you'll discover is that when liberals are hypocrites, when they abandon their principles uh, and go against the ideals they claim that they profess, their lives are better. Their kids end up going to better schools. Uh, they end up with more money. Uh, they end up more happy. And that's what I think makes it so interesting. That This is not simply an exercise in looking at certain people and, and, and having some fun at their expense, but to look at the ideas that underroot uh, the liberal left idea today. And my contention would be that those ideas generally don't work for individuals, and therefore they won't work for society at large.